Good evening, everyone. Welcome uh, to this December 8th meeting of the Capitola City Council. Um, I want to um, welcome everyone who's here in the audience, staff this evening, and as well, everyone who may be tuning in on the Zoom platform. Um, so um, may we start with a roll call, please? Council Member Brown. Present. Council, or Vice Mayor Kaiser. Here. Mayor Story. Here. Uh, Council Member Books. Here. And Council Member Bertrand. Present. Will everybody please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for that. You know, I, I've said that Pledge of Allegiance dozens, probably hundreds of times in this setting. And uh, it is particularly poignant for me because this, you know, may be one of the last times that I will say it in these chambers. And so thank you for sharing that with me. Um, next, maybe we have um, uh, any additions or deletions to the, this evening's agenda? Staff has no changes to the agenda this evening. Thank you. Any additional materials? Staff did provide an updated resolution for item 4C, which is the election certification. The resolution was only modified to include the county's certified results of election. Item 8B was also updated to include any applicants for the planning commission that submitted applications up until today's date. Both of those items are available online for the public and are available in hard copy at the dais. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to item four, which is the election business for this evening. Um, and the first item A is to consider and approve the City Council meeting minutes from May 19th, 2022, special meeting September 8th, 2022, special meeting and November 22nd, 2022, regular meeting. Uh, the recommended action is to approve those minutes. Um, is there a motion by council to move this item? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Uh, can we have a roll call vote, please? Council Member Mr. Brown. Mr. Mayor, you need public comment. Oh, um, thank you, City Attorney, for that. Um, so before we go on with the vote, I'll ask if there's any members of the public that would like to address this item. Seeing none, I'll ask the city clerk, is there anyone on Zoom that would like to address this item? I do not see any hands raised. All right, thank you. Next, we'll move on to... Um, we still I need to do the roll call vote, Mayor. Oh. You can't Thank get you. out of here that quickly. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Let's just be honest here. Slow down. Yeah. Um, yes. Thank you for that. Um, maybe I'm trying to rush this a little bit too much. <laughs> so, uh, can we have a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Brown. Aye. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Bertrand. I approve. Uh, Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. And Mayor Story. Aye. The motion passes unanimously which will now bring us to item 4B, which is the presentations of certificates of appreciation to outgoing council members and outgoing council member comments. Um, and so, well, if, um, maybe I'm gonna ask um, if Jacques will meet me right in front of the, the dais here. May I use, is this working? Okay, good. Um, well, this evening, um, I have the, I think the, maybe, I won't call it the pleasure, but the honor 
of, of recognizing and acknowledging Council Member Bertrand uh, for his years uh, on the City Council, two terms, eight years. Um, and um, just reflecting a bit, I do want to take a little bit of credit uh, for Jacques being on the City Council because uh, he was my uh, appointment um, when I was first elected back in 2006 uh, to be on the Finance Advisory Committee. And since then, he has been a strong advocate um, and a, um, you know, a servant uh, for uh, the community, representing them first on the Finance Advisory Committee, um, later several campaigns for Capitola City Council, and then uh, finally being elected to the Capitola City Council um, eight years ago. Uh, but under, you know, Capitola Ordinance, uh, we're limited to two terms, and so Jacques now needs to step aside for at least two years, and so, and, and maybe he will be back after that period of time. Uh, but I, in uh, recognition of Jacques' service um, to the city of Capitola, um, and also serving as mayor in the year 2018, 2019, and as city council member from 2014 to 2022, and also served as the Capitola treasurer uh, back when we used to have a treasurer uh, from 2008 to 2012. So uh, in recognition, uh, Jacques, I want to hand you this plaque. Thank you. Um, and, and also... <laughs> the Certificate of Appreciation um, is awarded to Jacques Bertrand in appreciation for his outstanding commitment and lasting contributions to the city of Capitola. So, Thank you. there you are, Jacques. Um, <laughs> All right, well, um, if you want to go back for one last uh, comment, I've always admired Jacques' ability for the gift of gab. <laughs> uh, and so, I, and, and something that I don't know that I've ever really possessed that uh, skill or talent, um, but maybe we'll hear a few words from him uh, now as he is exiting. <laughs> Go ahead, Jacques. 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 Jacques, you should. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. So, so the, the public on Zoom can hear you. Make it official. Okay. We don't want anyone to miss the last one. Okay. I thought about it on the way down here. The shake. So that's why I hate these things. And I still don't know what to say. And it's the truth. I don't know what to say. This is sort of like when you're dying. You know, your whole life flashes before you, and you're thinking about all the things that you did as city treasurer. It was actually two terms as city treasurer, not one. And what you did as city council person. And which were the ones that had the greatest impact? Which were the ones that made you feel the proudest? What were the lessons that you learned? The lessons about yourself? the lessons about the city. So to make it short, I do want to make this short. Think about what society is right now. We're on our Twitter, we're on our finger exercise machines, we're in front of TVs, we're not talking to people. So one of the things that I really appreciated about working here, moving to Capitola, we almost did it because the first time we came here, we got a ticket for parking too long. <laughs> <laughs> this is a common experience in Capitola. <laughs> but I think it has an effect because people still keep coming back. So what did I learn? When I reflect on our society right now, 
I campaigned. I knocked on doors. So the one thing that I could take away is that everywhere I walk in Capitola, I see someone I know. Everywhere I walk in Capitola, I remember knocking on that door. I remember the dogs I petted. I remember people telling me their stories. I remember people talking to me about what they liked about Capitola, what they didn't like about Capitola, the improvements that they wanted me to work on. The main thing I take away from this right now is in opposition to the fact that maybe a lot of us feel separate from our neighbors. In a way, we feel separate from the people around us that are in our community. Capitola is not that place. Because of my experience, I know it's not that place. I know the people who've worked, volunteered on all the different committees over the years that have made the different festivals that we have that make this city the place that people come and visit. It's a special place. People want to come here because they feel what Capitola is because of the people here and because of what the people do. I learned that because I lived here I knocked on doors, I talked to people, and I consider it a wonderful gift to me. Thank you. Well, Sam, do you want to meet me up there now? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to. Okay. Julia? Yeah. Okay, so I actually typed something because I <laughs> wasn't going to be able to follow these guys without having something in front of me. <laughs> Sam, welcome up here as, uh, as this road comes to a closure for you. Uh, Mayor Sam's story has been a Capitola staple for me as long as I can remember. Maybe Helen and you remember I was your neighbor and I remember right. thinking it was the coolest thing that the neighbor <laughs> was with the mayor. <laughs> and um, I just know that you've been a part of the city and, and the council for a long time. Um, he's actually served for 12 years altogether, three of which he was the mayor. And that's uh, a huge accomplishment. Um, first, you were elected in 2006. Then again in 2010, took some time off worked um, with the Capitola Planning Commission, and I know that's not an easy job either. Uh, then you came back to council in 2018, which brings us here, and I find myself really lucky to be a part of this term. You've also represented the city on the RTC, the Air Board, Cultural Council, Children's Network, Library, Joint Powers Board, the city's Art and Cultural Commission. You have uh, an extensive resume. Needless to say, your dedication to our special city is a testament to the wonderful person that you are. With your term coming to an end, I know that you will be missed by all, but I look forward to working with you in the future. Good luck on your next chapter. It's been an honor to serve by your side for Capitola. I also have a little something from the city with the help of Helen uh, from the Capitola Plain Air, one of the winners. Oh my word. If you want to take that, I don't want to mess with it, and also a certification. Oh, this, this was the actual winning portrait from the plein air mm -hmm. that just happened a, a little while ago. You know, I was there at the exhibit, and I was admiring this painting so much. <laughs> and I was thinking at the time, God, it would have been great if they gave this to me. <laughs> <laughs> and here you go, see? Just long if you dream it, yep. it can happen. Manifest. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Margo. Yes, you're welcome. And all council members and staff for making this happen. Um, and so. I'm sure you um, have something to say. Yes, I do. I do have something to say. <laughs> and I'm going to go back to my seat, though, because that will be my last chance to sit there. And, and pontificate, um, <laughs> but thank you for this. Well, I want to um, start out by saying and acknowledging, you know, um, change is hard. Um, 
but it's the only way that we can uh, actually personally and collectively, I think, develop and grow. Um, so, you know, that's why, you know, we have these term limits and these uh, cycling of, uh, you know, council members and new council members. Um, but after, you know, many years of serving on the city council, um, and as Margot mentioned, um, you know, in all the other capacities that I've had the opportunity to serve, I just want to say it's been a great honor and a privilege uh, for me. Um, and, um, you know, and looking back over the years, you know, there at times it's been um, very challenging issues and difficult decisions that um, I've had to make. Um, but I'd have to um, also acknowledge that it's always been very meaningful and rewarding work and, um, and educational uh, for me. Um, and I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to have been able to be allowed to serve in this capacity. Um, so um, I want to um, also congratulate um, the um, new electeds, um, Alexander and Joe. I think that's tremendous um, that y you um, chose to step up um, and, um, and were able to convince the community uh, to elect you, so congratulations on that. Um, but I also want to acknowledge uh, Jerry and Enrique, who also participated in the, in the campaign. And even though they didn't prevail this time, I hope they'll run again, um, because it's important that we have members of the community step forward and be willing to put themselves out there uh, and to share their ideals and their hopes um, you know, with the community um, and have that citizen-based governance that is really the bedrock of our democracy. And so um, their role in that um, was as important um, as uh, the winners uh, in this. And so um, I want to, you know, thank them, congratulate them. And, uh, and as I said, I hope they run again in two years. Um, you know, obviously, you know, I couldn't spend this amount of, you know, spend this time and have this opportunity if, if it weren't for the support of my family. So I want to principally acknowledge and recognize uh, Helen, my wife, uh, for her assistance. You know, my daughters, uh, Jesse and Jennifer, who are here this evening, and thank you for coming. Um, and I also want to thank my youngest daughter, uh, Ruby, who could not be here because she's in college uh, at this time. Hopefully, she may be listening in on Zoom. Are you out there, Ruby? Um, and so <laughs> I got a thumbs up on that. Um, I just want to thank all of you for your support and encouragement and patience uh, over the years for all your, um, you know, um, willingness to have so many pictures taken and for working on my campaigns and for walking the neighborhoods um, and, um, and for that I am very grateful. Um, I also want to thank um, all my uh, supporters, donors and endorsers throughout the years. Um, there are great numbers of them um, and I would not have been able to achieve this without uh, their um, assistance. Um, and I want to thank all the residents um, who um, cast their votes for me. You know, I think our, our votes are one of the most precious things that we have um, and that um, they should not be given away freely. You should expect people to earn them. Um, and I appreciate um, those um, voters in Capitola who did cast their votes for me. Um, and I also want to thank um, all the staff of the city of Capitola because, you know, and council members are only as good or as bad as the staff that work with them. Um, and we have a tremendous staff here in Capitola. Um, and I just, I want to acknowledge them um, and to thank them. Um, and starting with, um, and Steve Jesper, I worked with Steve Jesper for 
uh, all this time, and he just recently retired um, um, and uh, in the, from the Public Works Department. Um, and he, his replacement is Jessica, Jessica Kahn. Um, so I want to I wanna thank um, their leadership and all the Public Works staff for the daily things that you do to maintain our streets, to maintain our facilities and our parks, um, and all the other special projects that you do. Um, and I want to particularly highlight the construction of the new Capitola Library. I think that is a, um, an, example, uh, an example of just a wonderful project carried out by the staff uh, under trying and difficult circumstances uh, and bringing it to fruition. It's a beautiful structure. Um, and I know that the, you know, the work that they continue to do um, is going to just bring so much pride um, uh, to that part of the city of Capitola. Um, and Jessica, I just want you to know that I've received um, uh, appreciation from residents about the work that's now going on in Clare Street. And so um, you should be proud for that. And so, and, um, so I want to, you know, thank you for your management of all these, um, you know, and projects that are important to the city. Um, next, I want to uh, acknowledge Katie Hurley uh, and all the staff of the Community Development Department. Um, you know, those, um, they take on the tasks and accomplishments of making sure that all of our uh, structures and facilities and housing and, and uh, development are, are done in an appropriate way. Um, and it probably has the most um, um, impacts on us because we visually live it and we see it from day to day um, in, in how our uh, infrastructure is developed. Um, and I would have to say that they have one of the most technically and detailed oriented jobs. And there's so many projects that they handle, both small uh, residential projects to very big uh, commercial uh, projects. Um, and I want to also acknowledge, you know, the work that they did on developing our new zoning code in our last term and finally bringing that to approval and getting that approved by the Coastal Commission. Um, and, um, and all of that has been, is very essential to uh, really defining the aesthetics of our community. Um, and then I also want to thank um, uh, and Jim Malberg and, and finance and then the finance department um, and all the staff that work there for maintaining our finances and consistently, you know, winning awards for uh, municipal financial reporting and auditing. Um, your budget work has always had a high degree of confidence and assured us of where we stood financially. Um, and, and that takes a lot of attention to detail in managing uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, activities of transactions. And I know this was particularly difficult during the pandemic. Um, so, you know, thank you for the work that you've done. Um, and. I just want to say I've never realized that tax collection could become so intriguing and dramatic. Um, I think that's one of the more uh, eventful things that has happened recently involved the finance department, um, and, um, but in a good way for us. So um, thank you, Jim. Um, also, I want to acknowledge Nikki Bryant LeBlond and the recreational department. Um, and, um, you know, when she first started, she has so much developed our recreational department um, and has presented an active calendar of events and classes, um, food trucks at our parks. Um, and she's, you know, I, I like to think, Nikki, that you kept the fun in Capitola. Um, and so, and, and also acknowledging your work in the pan during the pandemic of keeping many of these programs ongoing, your partnerships with the school districts to develop um, um, after school classes um, in partnership with the school district. And uh, I know that that was a lifesaver for many uh, Capitola uh, children and families. 
Um, and I want to acknowledge uh, Councilmember Brooks' role in that effort as well. She was a leader uh, in bringing that uh, to the community. Um, and, and finally, Nikki, also um, I want to thank you for taking over the leadership of the Capitola Arts Commission. Um, and I think that that is a good move to have that be uh, a part of now Parks and Recs. Um, and um, I also want to acknowledge uh, Chief Daly um, and all the members of the Capitola of the Police Department. Um, you know, we couldn't do uh, all that we do um, if we didn't have uh, Captain Daly and the police officers and the staff of the police department, you know, doing their daily work at personal risk to themselves, you know, to keep us safe and civilized. Um, and, um, and I just want to extend my greatest, you know, both as a resident and, and a council member, gratitude for, you know, the work that you have done and that you do on a, on a daily basis. Um, and I just want to say that the members of the, our, our police department deserves the community's unfeathered support and uh, recognition and gratitude uh, for their ongoing work on our behalf. Um, I wanted to thank our former city clerk, Chloe uh, Woodmancy, uh, and all the other administrative staff um, for uh, the work that you do to maintain accessibility, keep our records, and, our, and maintain public relations with the community. Um, your work with the city newsletter uh, and the website has been tremendous um, and is well received. Um, I've been impressed by that. Um, thank you over the years for your assistance uh, to the council. Um, congratulations on your promotion to the assistant city manager. Um, and, I, and Julia, I also want to welcome you as the new uh, city clerk. Um, and I think the council is going to be well served uh, from uh, your efforts. Um, I also want to acknowledge uh, our city attorney, Samantha Zutler, and all the staff at Burke, Williams, and Sorensen. Um, I mean, thank you for your steady legal advice uh, and being available to us to answer legal questions whenever they come up. We knew that we can always call her um, if, you know, we, if we had a, a, a sticky legal issue and could get prompt response. Um, and it, that is so important because having competent legal counsel is important to have a well-run city. Um, and, um, and, uh, and just to acknowledge the many areas in which you have navigated us uh, through many uh, you know, legal issues and scenarios to a successful conclusion. So thank you, Sam. Um, and, and finally, I, I'm, and, and well, not finally, but I, I want to separately, you know, I, I acknowledge Jamie, Jamie Goldstein as city manager. Um, you know, I mean, all these other departments that I've just mentioned and the complexities with, within them, uh, Jamie runs them all. He oversees them all. Um, and he does it with a great deal of skill, composure, and professionalism. Um, and I think we're very fortunate to have somebody of Jamie's talent and dedication in that position. Um, and, you know, not only managing all the staff, but he's managing the city council and he's coordinating and developing our relationships with all the other jurisdictions, all the other committees, commissions, bodies, and agencies. And if it sounds like a lot, it is. It is a lot. And the numbers of them and, con and the complexities of the things that he has to deal with on a daily basis and to an try to anticipate and plan for, at times, even for me, it can seem mind-boggling. So, um, and um, I always felt like, Jamie, sometimes you're like playing four-dimensional chess um, in, in just managing everything that it takes to run a city and to run it well. And you do do that. Um, and so I want to thank you for your years of assistance for me, um, our working relationships, and, um, 
you know, it, I would say it's always been pleasurable and at times it's, that it's even been fun. So uh, thank you for that. I also want to acknowledge uh, my fellow council members here. Uh, it's been wonderful to work with you over the last four years. Um, I want to thank, for you, thank you for your support of me as mayor in this past year. Um, and I know that you have a lot of challenges coming up before you, um, but I leave being confident that um, you um, have, um, I think, the working relationships and the skills, the commitment, um, and I think the ca caring compassion to handle things in the appropriate way. So, um, but um, thank you. Um, and in closing, I think I just want to acknowledge, you know, I, I first um, came to Capitola in 1979, and it, it was rather serendipitously. Um, I just happened to luck out and ended up with one of my first jobs out of law school in Capitola. Um, and when I first came here, um, I, I could not believe it. It was like, I don't know if any of you have ever experienced love at first sight, but that was the experience that I have in first seeing Capitola. Um, and, the, and the first you know, significant image I have is looking out over uh, the bay uh, and looking down into the village. It's kind of a Mediterranean setting. Um, and every time I see it, I reflect back on that. But, you know, I fell in love with, um, you know, the village, um, the, the beautiful setting of the Monterey Bay, um, you know, the vibrant, um, you know, business that, that we have uh, in Capitola. Um, you know, the capital of history um, and the people um, that live here. And even though we're small, you know, the diverse neighborhoods that we have in Capitola, uh, from the Jewel Box to the Avenues to Depot Hill, uh, all the mobile home parks, there seems to be something, a little bit of something for everyone. When I first ran for city council, I, I did it with the goal of trying to preserve the best qualities of Capitola um, as we were confronting and adapting to changing forces that are coming upon us. Um, and um, I hope that in some small measure I, I have helped accomplish that goal. Um, and in closing, I'll just say, you know, thank you for the opportunity um, and I look forward to watching the new council as it moves forward. Thank you, everyone. Story. I think you have one more item. One more, one more item. Not yes. quite out of here yet. Oh. This isn't it. Oh. One more. <laughs> you have to certify the election. <laughs> oh. so when it, you lose your edge when you uh, <laughs> have one foot out the door. Okay. All right. Um, well, um, my last official order of business is to uh, request a resolution uh, confirming and approving the canvas of returns and results of the general municipal election. Is there a motion? Do we need to go to public comment? Public comment now? Yes, sir. Um, um, well, I've been told I need to go to public comment. And so, is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the public on uh, this this item? Yes, step up. Um, yes, <laughs> yes, step up, Jesse. Hi. Uh, thank you, Council. I just wanted to, you know, take a quick moment to acknowledge my dad. Um, I didn't think I was going to cry, but <laughs> um, I had the privilege of growing up in Capitola. I just live right outside city limits, but Capitola will always be my home. Um, and that's thanks to my parents. I had the privilege of doing junior lifeguards here in Capitola, as well as my first real job was at the Bayshore Lyric Opera, um, which I'm very, we used to go to movies at the 
movie theater when it was still there. So I have such fond memories of Capitola, always will. Um, and it's been just such, a, so proud of you to see you in the role here and continuing to take care of the city. So thank you, Dad, we're very proud of you. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> Hi, uh, I wasn't actually gonna say anything, but I'm Jennifer Walker. I'm also one of Sam's daughters. And growing up in Capitola again was a great privilege and, and seeing people that I know and worked with coming up on almost 40 years, which is kind of freaky. Um, and I'll say that having Sam as a council person and mayor was really special to say, hey, yeah, I know that guy, he's my dad. <laughs> and I'll go, wow, Sam's really great, wow, you know. So it's there's been a lot of people that you have affected and helped, and I've seen you grow along the way and become such an even more eloquent speaker, very gracious, and it's very exciting to see that you gave back to the community. So I'll say that, like Jesse, I'm very proud and I got a small glimpse of what it takes to run a campaign, being a treasurer for one year, and then I said, ah, that's too hard. <laughs> <laughs> so running for government and serving in government is challenging, especially in these times, and so I think it's a great um, service that you've done, and we are very proud of you, so thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get in on the, the congratulations. So um, I'm uh, Helen, Sam's wife, and I just want to say how proud I am of you, of your service to uh, the community, you know, since 2006. And we were just reflecting on how in your first campaign, you know, Ruby was 18 months, you know, a year and a half. And we were out, you know, knocking on doors and talking to community members and seeing what their concerns were. And, um, you know, I just think that it was a logical thing for you to do to run, um, you know, and represent the city as a city council member. And because your heart is here, as you said, you fell in love with Capitola, and I know that you, you did, and it's an enduring love. And so I really appreciate, you know, all of the um, hard work that you put into representing the city. Um, and I know the, the many, many meetings, um, the many um, issues and, you know, uh, solutions, right? Working on trying to make solutions um, that benefit people in this community. And so I really want to thank you for your efforts around that, you know, as a resident, as your wife, being along in that journey. Um, to make this community the lovely place that it is and working with everyone else to make that happen. So just want to say congratulations, thank you, and I'm really, really proud of you. And I know that Ruby is watching virtually and, and is proud of you as well, and I'm so happy to be here with the family to um, you know thank and congratulate you on your service. Mm -hmm. so, thank you. Well, thank you. Anyone else have any some kind <laughs> words that they like? <laughs> I, I'm loving this. I'm so <laughs> <We're> <laughs> <laughs> well, seeing none, I'll let, is there uh, anyone on Zoom, Julio? That there are no hands raised on Zoom. Okay, thank you. Um, so I guess we'll get back to the um, current business at hand. Um, which is a resolution confirming and approving the canvas of returns and results of the general municipal election. The recommended action is to adopt the proposed resolution confirming election yeah. results. Is there a motion? I can make a motion. And I'll second. It's a motion by Vice Mayor Kaiser, seconded by Council Member Brooks. May we have a roll call vote, please? Council Member Brown? Aye. Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Bertrand? I approve. Vice Mayor Kaiser? Aye. And Mayor Story? Aye. So is my, is my job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
You voted yourself off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I worked my way oh. out of a job. Thank you, everyone. So now I have to follow that. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to take us down to um, item 4D, where we have the oath of office ceremony for the newly elected candidates and the re-elected candidates of the Capitola City Council. Our recommended action is to administer the oath of office and receive comments from new council members. So if we could have the newly elected council members join us up at the dais and our re-elected council members stand up at the dais. <laughs> We're going to be following the ballot order, so council member Brooks will actually be the first person to be sworn in. And she's getting sworn in by her friend and colleague in local government, Martine Watkins. It's an honor to swear in council member Brooks. So you know the deal. So if you would please say aye and state your name and raise your right hand. Aye, is that correct? Do you sol solemnly swear or affirm? Do you solemnly swear or affirm? That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of California, and, Constitution of California and that I take this obligation freely Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. <laughs> mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Yes. And that I will well and faithfully. That I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. Discharge the duties that I'm about to enter. Congratulations. So I'm so much. proud of you. The next newly elected council member is going to be Alexander Peterson. So if you wouldn't mind just raising your right hand and repeating after me, the first part is going to be I, and then you're going to state your name. I, Alexander Peterson. Wait, I'm going to have to I, Alexander Peterson. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. Discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. <laughs> and last but not least, we have our newly elected council member, Joe Peter or Joe Clark. I, Joe Clark, do solemnly, swear, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend, that I will support and defend the, Constitution of the, United States, the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Consti Constitution of, the State of California against all enemies, against all enemies foreign, and domestic, 
foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I'll bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully. That I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties that I'm about to answer. Thank you. We do have certificates that the council members need to sign, and then they can take their seats. I have one for you to sign. Here you go. Let me get this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she has it. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, I already whined him about the nameplates. Whined him about the nameplates. <laughs> it should be just behind it for both Sam's and Jock's. Look at that. <laughs> there and then do the uh, reorg and then we'll re gotcha. everyone will okay. yeah, you can the short chair. Welcome gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can I do some comments? Yeah. Are you guys gonna yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure I'd love to go first since I was last. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's great to see everybody here. I'm really excited. Um, I'm so honored and humbled to have been elected by the good people of the city of Capitola. My family and I have spent endless nights and days working on this and coming to this moment. I would really like to thank all the candidates who poured everything they had into this crazy close race. I mean, it was pretty crazy <laughs> and pretty close. Um, looking at Jock, and Sam leaving, boy, we have some huge shoes to fill. But I would really like to thank uh, Councilman Bertrand, Mayor Story, for their outstanding leadership and their tireless work for our city. Outstanding job. But now, I look forward to uh, what lies ahead and uh, can't wait to get to work with all these great people. Thank you all. I just wanted to say thank you to my family, my friends. Oh, I get a little worked up with my daughter there. <laughs> um, congratulations. I am just honored. Thanks. I'd like to uh, thank everybody here today and everybody watching online. Um, I'm really honored to be here tonight and um, to have the opportunity to serve this amazing community over the next four years. I'd like to thank my family and my partner for always being there throughout the ups and downs of this new journey into public service. And I'd like to thank all the people who supported me during these past few months because I wouldn't be here. Um, if it weren't for their incredible generosity and encouragement. I'm really looking forward to working with everybody in our community, with our great staff, and with the rest of the City Council. And I'm excited to build strong working relationships with our community members, find common ground in complex situations, and work together to promote the welfare of our community. I'd also like to take this opportunity to encourage 
uh, all Capitola residents to feel free to reach out to me directly for any reason and that I'm always happy to listen and to learn. And finally, I'd like to thank Sam Story and Jacques Bertrand for setting the bar so high and for your many years of service. Um, like Joe said, you have left some very big shoes to fill, uh, and I hope that you'll stay involved and allow us to lean on your many years of experience. Thank you. Do we do public comment right here? Okay. Okay, so we can move on to item 4E, which will be the City Council reorganization for 2023. The recommended action is to have city council members nominate and elect a new mayor and vice mayor. Do we have anybody ready to make a motion for mayor and vice mayor? Oh, we do need public comment for, on this one. Anybody in the public would like to speak on this item? Anybody online? There are no hands raised on Zoom. Thank you. Any comments from council? Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I'll go ahead and make a motion to um, to elect our new mayor, Margot Kaiser, and our vice mayor as Kristen Peterson. And now that I have myself a little bit more put together after that. There's, oh, a, new, there's a new Peterson Brown. in town. There can only be one at a time. I'd like to amend there can only be my one motion. At a time, so I, had to, you know. I, I would like to amend my motion, pardon me. Vice Mayor Kristen Brown. And, and now that I have myself a little bit more put together, I want to say thank you so much for, for, and congratulations to our incoming council members and council member Bertrand and mayor story it has truly been an honor and you have paved the way for all of us to continue your legacy and the hard work in our community and these two fabulous women up here will continue to do that work i'm sure as well as myself and i'm full of gratitude for that so um again congratulations and i'm really happy to be making this motion this evening also i'd like to make my first uh, second yeah Great. All right. We have a first and a second for the nomination of the new mayor and vice mayor. May we have a roll call? Councilmember Brown. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. I approve. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Clark. Aye. And Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. That passes unanimously. So now we will actively reorganize our chairs, I think, <laughs> up here. Short but sweet. Yeah, so I guess I'll move to the center, and then I guess. Where do I go? Over I guess you can just come down here. Straight Mayor Kaiser, do you want to assign seats, or are you good with? Um, no. Okay. Do I need? Okay. Should I? It's the mayor's oh. Um, I the think. The chairs that are determined are going to be these. Okay. This works for me. Is that, is that okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Now I'm so confused when I hear Councilmember Peterson. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be really confusing. Okay. Years, I'll change my name to Brown. Okay. <laughs> we'll just go back to yours. <laughs> All right. So we're moving on to item five, which is oral communications from members of the public. These will be um, communications brought to us by anything that is not on the agenda tonight. Is there anybody in the public that would like to speak? Seeing no one here, anybody online? We don't currently have any public speakers on Zoom. Okay, wonderful. So then that takes us to item six, which is staff or city council comments. Do we want to start with staff? Any staff members have comments? Uh, thank you, Mayor Kaiser. I would like to just make a brief comment to really take a moment to thank our outgoing council members. I know everyone has said so many kind words, but it really has been a pleasure to work with both um, Mayor Story and Council Member Bertrand all of these years. 
Uh, I've learned a lot from both of them. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank all the candidates, everyone's interest in City of Capitol and the willingness to step up and serve. It was a very close race, as we heard, uh, and it was really neat to see new leaders step up and, and offer their services to the City of Capitola. I want to congratulate the winners on the election. It was a tough campaign, and you obviously did something right, and so congratulations. And lastly, to the full council, from all of us and staff, we're really looking forward to working together for the next two years with this council. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And I think we're going to be able to do great things for the city of Capitola. Awesome. Thank you. Any council members have any comments? Yeah. Just have a brief comment. Sure. Um, so I'll, I'll be uh, brief as well. But I also want to thank council member Bertrand and uh, outgoing May, uh, Mayor Story for all of your years of service. Um, Councilmember Bertrand, I was, uh, had the privilege of being the vice mayor when you were the mayor, and it was really an honor to sit on the finance advisory committee with you. We've sat on RTC together for a couple years, and I found you to be such a thoughtful and insightful leader. And I know that all the way from your time as an activist in San Francisco up until your work at this very dais tonight, you have been such a, a leader in our community, and I'm grateful for your service. Um, and then Mayor Story, um, thank you so much for being such an example of leadership in our city. When I first ran in 2016, I remember coming to your home and sitting at your uh, kitchen table or uh, in your kitchen and asking you um, what you thought about the idea of me running. And I think one of your daughters said it best that you're so elo eloquent and gracious and you have a sense of calm about you when you speak that almost makes me feel like I'm like buzzing because <laughs> I I'm, I'm, have so much to say and I just want to get it out and then you're just very yes that's a great idea i think that would be <laughs> wonderful and i have, it reminds me to slow down but one of the things you told me that really stuck with me is you asked why i wanted to run and i don't know if you remember i said well i want to run to be the voice of the people and what you told me was the voice of the people is not always um it's the voice of the people is quite often divided and what was i going to do when that happened and that was one of the most important pieces of advice that i got moving into my very first campaign and it's something that i pass on to others when they tell me that they want to run or when i talk to other people about potentially being in a position of leadership is that um, the voices of the community you want to serve will not always be uh, united and then that's when it's going to be uh, difficult but worth it and so thank you so much for that advice um, Okay, with that being said, the other thing that I wanted to share uh, this evening is just that we got an email um, of compliments to our law enforcement. Apparently there was a situation, uh, potentially threatening domestic dispute, um, and we got an email from someone who witnessed it talking about how great our um, police uh, that arrived on the scene had handled that situation, and so I just wanna take a moment to acknowledge that and again, thank um, our law enforcement officers for all of the great work they do in our community. Wonderful, yeah. thank you. Any other council comments? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to say a very early happy birthday to our city manager, <laughs> Jamie. Um, we have not forgotten it's your 25th birthday. <laughs> and I so just big. <laughs> wanted to wish you a very happy birthday. Um, and also, I would like to, um, again, acknowledge the outgoing council members and the community for participating in this election cycle. Um, participating in government is no easy task, and what you see before, he, before you this evening is a group that I trust is going to do an exceptional job with, with the work to come, and I'm really honored to be sitting with all of you. So thank you so much. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, everybody. Um, yeah, I'll just follow that up um, to just touch on Jacques and Sam's exit. Um, I had to run a really strange campaign during COVID, and so it, it really kind of uh, mixed it up for me, but it was really nice to be able to have people on the council that were still receptive, even in such a strange time. Um, Things were super uncertain, everything was still remote, but I still was able to make connections with Jacques and Sam and be sort of informed and, as Kristen said, put at ease as well. <laughs> and Sam's demeanor is very uh, 
it's comforting in especially in a time where like somebody like me who had no idea what I was getting myself into so I just want to say thank you both um you've both done so much here for the community and yeah we've got uh big shoes to fill but looking forward to it so thanks again guys and um, also, I drove down Claire's today, and it was an amazing experience. And so I just want to say thank you to Public Works um, and everybody that's been involved um, with that project. It's been a long time coming, and just seeing it come to fruition is like, I'm like, yes, we're doing it, and it feels so good. So thank you so much. Um, and I think that's all that I had up there. All right, so we can go on to item seven which will be the consent items. So um, they're all enacted in one motion. They are listed below, A through D. Um, do we have um, any comments or does anybody want to say anything on consent? Anybody online? There is there nobody, nobody's on there? I'll just give it a second for okay. members of the public. But as of right now, there are no public speakers and no hands raised. Great. OK. Well, we can move on um, to any comments or motions for consent items. I'll move consent. I'll second. Great. We have movement and a second on the consent. Can we also have a roll call, please? Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Aye. Councilmember Clark? Aye. Vice Mayor Brown? Aye. And Mayor Kaiser? Aye. All right, passes unanimously. We will move on to item eight, general government. And 8A will be the 2023 council meeting schedule. Our action, recommended action here is to adopt the regular meeting schedule for 2023. Do we have? It's gonna be me, I just need one second to pull up my presentation. Take your time, thank you. Well, good evening for the first time, Madam Mayor and City Council members. Tonight for your consideration is the proposed 2023 regular City Council meeting calendar. As a reminder, this meeting calendar is um, presented annually to the Council for Adoption. The small difference this year is that staff is presenting an option to change the meeting time to an earlier time. So instead of meeting at 7 p.m., we proposed an option where we could meet at 6 p.m. Taking into account that our local, other local agencies in the area, like the City of Santa Cruz, the County Board of Supervisors, City of Watsonville, and City of Scotts Valley, do tend to meet earlier, we propose this option, taking into account that this might increase staff productivity by allowing um, less of a long workday for staff members who work the meetings, increase council productivity because we take into account that you guys are also working, and this option allows a shorter day for you as well. And then an increase in public participation because of the hybrid meeting format. Members of the public can now join directly. They don't have to drive from a different area. So it allows for increased public participation. Some cons that we did take into consideration with this proposed time change is that there may be work conflicts for council members if they tend to work past um, 5.30. And then potential conflicts for closed sessions when they are scheduled. If a closed session was to be scheduled, staff would make sure to coordinate that when notify the city council in advance to avoid any potential conflicts. Within the staff report for this item, there were two proposed options for the 2023 calendar. Option A includes uh, the usual two meetings per month on the, I believe it's the second and fourth Thursday of each month. Um, this option includes one July and one August meeting, giving a break between those two meetings. As is typical, there is only one um, meeting in December, and there is a meeting that is moved to a Tuesday in November to accommodate Thanksgiving. Option B that was presented in the staff report includes no July meetings, that which allow for a break in July, and then there are two August meetings. This also incorporates the Tuesday, November meeting and one December meeting. 
the recommended action for this item is that staff review and adopt the regular meeting schedule and approve a start time for the regular meeting schedule for 2023. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Any questions from council? Seeing none, we can go out to anybody from the public. Or online. There are no public speakers raising their hand on Zoom. Great. Any council comments? I, I would just say it, it's the will of the council. I, I think for the last four years we've begun at seven. Um, and I'm just thinking about if staff can work with us on the closed session piece because sometimes it's exactly at five, which is hard for, for I think, those who are working um, and hard for myself. So I'd be open to switching it. I just think that we just have to be mindful of the closed session piece. Um, and for council, that's just what that probably would look like. I'm guessing if staff could help with that is um, additional meetings. So those would be probably, closed session would probably be held on additional days. And I'm not sure if that's something council would, would be interested in doing. Um, I'm also curious in hearing about the potential for a closed session after the meetings. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. So that would be an option. I think probably what this, we, we've been having closed sessions, I'd say about half the time on council meetings. And so I, it seems as if maybe we had a half hour closed session, we could start at a 530. If we needed more time for that, I think staff could check in with council members, see if a five o'clock or a 430 start would work. If not, we could look at the overall agenda, work with the mayor, see if we could do it at the end of the night. If all else failed, then we could talk about a special meeting for the closed session. So I think it's worth considering the six o'clock start, and then we just need to see how it goes. And you know, do keep in mind that if we get through it three months and it's just not working, we can readopt and move our regular meeting schedule if we needed to. So my suggestion is, is I think it's an idea worth trying, unless somebody is really, just from a work schedule standpoint, couldn't ever do anything um, before 5.30. I'm all for it, personally. Oh my. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm all for at least trying the six o'clock. Um, it's been something that I've been interested in in a while. Um, if everybody is okay, or most people are okay with that, um, does anybody have any thoughts on the option A or B of the dates? I guess is. I, I would just be interested in getting the rest of the council's input on the times, um, just because I know that some of you commute, and so yeah. Council Member Brown, does 6 or 6.30 work better for you? I can make either work, but I'm, I think it is important that we do this on trial, essentially, mm -hmm. and then if it doesn't work, that we can go, we can go back. Um, I'm not opposed. I'm not opposed. But I, I do have concerns about the closed session part of it, about closed session starting at 4.30 or right at 5 or having to essentially start, you know, putting out doodle polls and whatnot about, well, when can we all get together for a closed session? And that, that concerns me a bit. Um, but I'm, o I'm okay with, with trying it at 6. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm flexible. Okay. I'm oh, happy with fine. whatever works for everybody else. Okay. okay. There's that. Sweet. Uh, for the meeting options, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I don't have a huge preference on having an entire month off or having the two months with one meeting each. I'm kind of used to the two months with one meeting each, and it kind of feels like you're getting two Thanks. short weeks or two short, you know, two extended vacations. I don't know how to describe it. So I'm okay with keeping it how it is, but that's just my uh, thoughts on that. Is it how it is? Is that option A? Uh, option yes. A. Yeah. I, I would prefer A also. Yeah, we would. Okay. I don't have any preference. Okay. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion to um, move city council meetings to 6 p.m. on a trial basis and to adopt option A for the 2023 city of Capitola city council regular meeting dates. Second. Great, thank you. We have a motion and a second. May we please have a roll call? Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Clark? Aye. Vice Mayor Brown? 
Aye. And Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Passes unanimously. Thank you. That can take us to 8B, which is the City Council appointments to City Advisory Bodies. So our recommended action here is to appoint City Council representatives to county and regional boards with early January meetings, appoint City Council representatives to City Advisory Bodies, and appoint members of the public to the City of Capitola Planning Commission. So again, this is gonna be coming from me once again. Good <laughs> evening. <laughs> As we move through this presentation, I am gonna take breaks to pause so we can allow time for deliberation and a vote on each individual action that's recommended on the screen. But as you outlined, staff recommends that the city council review and update the appointments on county and multi-jurisdiction boards and commissions, review and update the city council representatives on city advisory bodies, and then make appointments or review appointments to the planning commission. As a brief overview, um, the city of Capitola is represented on various multi-jurisdictional advisory bodies within the area by members of the city council. These boards and committees are established by other codes or bylaws. On the screen is the current status of some of, or all of the um, boards and commissions within the area with the representative and alternate appointments and the next meeting date. The chart is listed by meeting date, so it's organized in terms of um, the highest priority ones that need to be made. So you'll see that there are four of them that are highlighted within the red text box. If you need or would like additional information on each of the groups, um, myself or the city manager can provide a brief overview. But the four groups that we recommend for appointment this evening that will be meeting between now and the next regular city council meeting are the Flood Control and Water Conservation District, the Central Coast Clean Energy Policy Board, um, AMBAG, and the Regional Transportation Commission. Something to note is that for the 3CE um, Energy Policy Board, the City Council will be making a nomination and then the nomination will be approved by the Santa Cruz uh, Mayoral, or it's the Mayoral Appointment Committee, I believe. The city selection the committee. The city selection committee, excuse the county, me. Yes. <laughs> so this is the point where we would pause and deliberate <laughs> on this first <laughs> item of action for this item. Okay. So I guess, do we have anybody that would like to be on the Flood Control and Water Conservation District Zone 5? I see you're the alternate, but no one's jumping up at that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, 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 I'll okay, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we can move. So, so each of the four groups oh, wait, do require. All right. <laughs> they require a primary representative and an alternate representative. So the motion should to include. Be the Thank you. John. I might be absent next week, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll be ready to cover. For Just you. talk to Jacques; he can fill you in. Okay. Do we have to, we have to vote, vote on, on that particular? Each? My suggestion would be maybe we could, Julie, do you think you could fill in names as we go and then they yeah. could vote on the whole sort of slate? Okay, that'd be great. So we're going to So the next group would be the Central Coast Clean Energy Policy Board, which again is a nomination. So the council will nominate a primary and alternate, alternate member. One detail I might note on this one is is that generally under the bylaws, this position is a shared seat between Capitola and Scotts Valley. We went through a cycle where we served for two years and then Scotts Valley served for two years and then we just did another two year term as representatives. Um, the Scotts, uh, we, I've been in communication with the Scotts Valley city manager and we've concluded that it's, it's a little bit of a, it's discombobulating I think for that and organization to have the membership switch so much. So Scotts Valley has said that they're prepared to step away from the term this year to m maintain more continuity on the board. I'd like to keep my seat on Central Coast Clean Energy Policy Board. <clears throat> I can stay okay. being the alternate, it's fine. Thank you. All right, moving right along, our next one is gonna be for AMBAG and their next meeting is gonna be on the 11th at 5 p.m. 
I've enjoyed my time on AMBAG. I would be happy to remain in that seat if that's um, okay with the, the will of the council. You're my alternate. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, I can do that. Yeah. Oh, the transportation. <laughs> I think. I don't know. Ready for the next one? Yep. Yeah. I'm uh, interested in serving yes. <laughs> on the Regional Transportation Commission. And I would love to be the alternate. For it. Perfect. So at this point in time, the council could continue to make appointments to the following four remaining multi-jurisdictional county agency groups, but we could also make these appointments at the following city council meeting, because as you see on the chart, the next meeting date for each of these is going to be after January 12th. So it is... Um, your decision whether or not to continue making appointments or we can move those to the next meeting. I wouldn't mind maybe digesting a little bit of it yeah. so we I, could, I can maybe make some better decisions. But yeah, yeah that was kind of my okay. vibe, yes. I have a question about the appointments we just made. Sure. The uh, Flood Control and Water Conservation District, because they're meeting next week, is the city going to inform them that I'm the new rep and they'll reach out to me or do I need to proactively reach out to someone and tell them I'm coming? So I will communicate to the clerk of the board for each of these groups that appointments have been made and they will um, be in contact with you to provide you with agenda materials for those meetings. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Okay, I think um, it sounds like we'd like to vote on these four and then get back to the later dated ones next meeting. Give everybody a moment to settle in. So in that case, we would need a motion and a second on the currently. And talk to the public first. Oh, right. Yes. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anybody out there. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing none. And online. There are no hands raised for public comment. Great. Would anybody like to make a motion? I'll move to um, recommend the positions. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. Maybe have a roll call. Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Clark? Aye. Vice Mayor Brown? Aye. And Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Thank you. Moving on to the next item of action. So the city maintains advisory bodies that provide, um, they assist and advise in formulating different types of things for the city. Um, and parts of those groups sometimes have council representation. So appointments are made depending on bylaws or municipal code for each of these groups but we have three of them that require review at tonight's meeting. Staff recommends making appointments to the three advisory bodies listed below, Finance Advisory Committee, Commission on the Environment, and Arts and Cultural Commission. Something to note is the Finance Advisory Committee bylaws stipulate that the mayor and vice mayor will serve as council representatives, though when either or both do not wish to serve as a representative on this committee, other members shall be appointed by the mayor with the concurrence of the city council. So that's something to bear in mind. Thank you. Are you gonna stay on finance advisory? Oh, um, I know you wanna stay on. I'm happy to stay on. Okay. I like it. Do you wanna s be on it or? I'm happy to, but if you wanna keep yours, then I'll cycle I'm, my stay. I'm, e I'm impartial, so. I don't, I don't okay. feel super strongly either way. Either. So are you, would Alexander become your representative? Well, yeah, or I would, yeah, give my spot to Alexander. Well, the mayor is supposed to have a seat unless he wants to take it up. But Alexander would be. Um, yeah, I'm fine doing that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll, I'll take, I'll go too. Okay. So Kristen and Alexander. When's the next one? The 20th? The following group is the Commission on the Environment, and this one has one council position as a part of the That's composition. Me. I'm fine staying on it, unless any other contenders. The third group is Arts and Cultural Commission, and again, this has one council member um, listed as a part of the composition. 
I'll take it. I'll volunteer for it. Great. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, that is a good one. Great. With that, staff recommends a motion to approve the appointment of these three boards or commission uh, council member positions. Great. We'll take uh, any public comment on that and anything online if there is. There are no hands raised on Zoom. Great. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion for the boards and commissions. I'll second. Is that enough or do we have to? <coughs> I understood the motion to be to um, to approve the representatives on the screen for the That's commissions correct. on the screen. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe we have a roll call. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Clark? Aye. Vice Mayor Brown? Aye. And Mayor Kaiser? Aye. Passes unanimously. We can go on to the third section. The third section is concerning the city's advisory bodies and appointments of members of the public to each of these bodies. Um, there are two types of vacancies for these types of groups. There are unscheduled vacancies, which are occurring due to resignation, termination, or in some cases, death of a commissioner. Regular vacancies refer to terms that expire and are available for appointment or reappointment. Currently, there are a number of vacancies for these city's advisory groups. They were listed online and posted on the city's website and social media pages. Staff is actively recruiting for these groups and is currently accepting applications. Ap applications are available through the city's website and in person at City Hall. Of these vacancies, um, only the planning, or the planning Commission requires an appointment by each member of the City Council, so each City Council member would have one appointment to the group. The next Planning Commission meeting is going to be held on January 19th. At this time, the City Council may make appointments to the Planning Commission. Um, staff recommends postponing appointments to the remaining advisory bodies until January 12th to allow additional time for members of the public to apply to the groups that are currently um, have vacancies. The current composition of the Planning Commission is listed on the screen with each member designated by their council appointment. All of these members have uh, um, notified the city clerk that they are seeking reappointment to their positions. In addition, staff has received four applications for new membership to the Planning Commission and those names are listed on the screen. The applications uh, have been provided as a part of the agenda packet as well as the list of members' names. Any questions? So for this item, council members can just simply state who their planning commissioner will be and you probably don't need a vote. So it's possible you may want to go to uh, public comment prior to making those appointments. Great. Let's go to public comment. Seeing none. There are no speakers raising their hands on Zoom. Okay. Uh, do we want to just go down the list or? Yeah, you want to start with planning commissioner and just start at one end and go through? Sure, I would like to name my planning commissioners uh, Jerry Jensen. And I'd like to reappoint Courtney Christensen as a planning commissioner as well as the Art and Cultural Commission representative. I will continue my appointment of Susan Westman on the Planning Commission. I'll continue with my appointment of Peter Wilk. I'd like to appoint Paul Esty to the Planning Commission. Thank you. To just confirm for the minutes, mm -hmm. Councilmember Clark would like to appoint Jerry Jensen. Councilmember Brooks will appoint or reappoint Courtney Christensen, or Christensen. Mayor Kaiser will be reappointing Susan Westman. Vice Mayor Brown will be reappointing Peter Wilk, and Councilmember Peterson will be appointing Paul Esty. All right. Great. Do we have to vote on it? Or no? No, these are individual appointments, so they're not rallied, ratified by the council as a whole. Great. With the conclusion of the three recommended actions listed for tonight's agenda, 
The remaining appointments will be presented to you for consideration on January 12th. So for the city advisory bodies, that remains uh, the Commission on the Environment, Finance Advisory Committee, Arts and Cultural Commission, and the Historical Museum Board. In addition, there will be items for the multi-jurisdictional bodies that were not appointed this evening. And um, as there were planning commissions made tonight, we will not have any more applications for the planning commission for the next meeting date. Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, so it looks like we have made it to item nine, which is the adjournment. Um, before we head out, I just want to thank the council members and um, I'm nervous but super excited to be sitting here as mayor and um, vice mayor with Ms. Brown over here. And um, just after hearing everything that um, Jacques talked about and Sam's story on his exit, um, just thank you to staff and everybody. Um, it, this is sort of that time of year too where you just start um, some reflection and looking at everybody around you. And I couldn't be more thankful to be sitting here with these people in this room right now and it really means a lot and I hope everybody um, has an awesome holiday season just stay safe be kind to one another stay healthy please <laughs> let's let's keep this under wraps um, and Merry Christmas Happy Hanukkah Happy New Year Kwanzaa everybody um, thanks for being here this meeting is adjourned <laughs>